competition debrief. Oh yes! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! That's craziness! Coming up. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Jay, barista, world coffee championship judge, and I don't know, what else am I? This channel, Odo Coffee, is all about coffee. I appreciate you spending a little time with me today as we get into Diego Campos' semifinals performance at the World Barista Championship held in Milan. If you don't know already, Diego is the current reigning World Barista Championship and he won yesterday, October 25th. So I thought we'd get into how the judges may have approached Diego's performance in the semifinals round by going through it with you and talking about the scoring and the score sheets and how I might have judged that. So let's get into it. For the World Barista Championship, judging is based on two parts, sensory and technical. And these are evaluated by five different judges, four sensory and one technical judge. On the sensory judge score sheet, you have a potential total score of 71 points. On each of the sensory judges score sheets, you have a total potential points of 162. This means your total sensory scores across all four judges potentially 648 points or 90% of your total score. So this means that in competition, you want to gather as many of those sensory points as you possibly can. But I've got my clipboard now and I'm ready to go, so let's get into it. Can I please have my music? Here we go. Time. Hello, judges. The quality of a specialty coffee has been in a constant evolution and improvement from seat to cup. However, we should not stop our innovation efforts at the cup because that is where the consumer experience starts. So today, I want to take one more step. Instead of leaving the espresso to speak for itself, I will complement it with a multisensory stimulation to enhance the tasting experience. It will be fun, engaging and immersive. So let's get started. The coffee I will with you today is something really special. This coffee is a species called Eugenioides, and it was rescued from a genetics lab. It is by far the most surprising and fascinating coffee I have ever tasted. This coffee is produced in Colombia, in Finca Las Nubes, at 2,000 meters. Growing at this high altitude, it slow down the ripening of the cherries, which create a greater concentration of sugars, lipids, and organic acids. This makes this coffee taste simply phenomenal with an unbelievable sweetness and amazing mouthfeel, a juicy acidity, and a delicious tropical fruit flavors. Julian Olguin is the producer and he has developed a natural ecosystem in Finca Las Nubes. The idea is to replicate the wild and native growing conditions of the forest of East Africa, where this coffee originally comes from. My coffee has a natural process with eight days of anaerobic fermentation. This coffee was right to 11% over rotating red beds. These rotating red beds are inside of a greenhouse with fans to slow down the drying process. This carefully processing and dry makes my, makes my coffee taste sweeter and with more flavor clarity. Judges, I found the best sensory expression of my coffee with a 20% extraction and 8% TDS. Today, I am dosing 20 grams of coffee to pull out 46 grams of espresso with a setting water at 91 degrees. Today, I'm using the same brewing parameters for all the drinks you will enjoy today. Okay, my friends, today, I want to take your espresso tasting experience to the whole new level by stimulating all your sense. I will stimulate your sense of a smell with the aroma of a cloud or dry ice. 
that highlights the tropical fruit flavors. Your sense of touch will be stimulated with the sphere that represents the round body and the slippery texture. Your sense of hearing and sight, the music and the video that amplifies the sweetness. And finally, your sense of taste will be stimulated by tasting the flavors in espresso. So guys, tasting nuts. Very high sweetness that feels like brown sugar. Beautiful flavors of cacao nibs, passion fruit, papaya, and tangerine with hint of malt. The bitterness is low. Acidity is medium with a juicy sensation. The tactile experience is just amazing. It has a medium round body with a silky and a slippery texture that comes your palate with a long lasting finish. Take the spoon, stir three times, and you can return this book on the white cup. The card in front of you has information of the coffees you will enjoy today. Keep. All right, I'm going to stop it here for a moment. So this is the point where he's serving his espresso. If you've noticed, earlier on, he actually pulled two shots into two separate, and four shots into two separate vessels, and then put those into a beaker. So in this case, the competitor, Diego, is pulling the shots for his signature drink first, for a variety of reasons, he just get either to get them out of the way or to allow them time to cool down, especially if he's going to go with some kind of cooler drink. So that's an option that a, a barista competitor can do. They can pull their sing they don't have to pull their signature drink beverage shots during the signature drink signature drink preparation section. They can do it any time. Some of the things that are that are really good, like you notice, he's come out. He's very confident. He's very knowledgeable. He's very enthusiastic and smooth and calm. Um, and he's also quite knowledgeable. He talks about the coffee, which is this eugenioids coffee, which is another type of genus of coffee. That's um, it's that some people say it's the mother, the mother species or genus of Arabica. Evidently, eugenioids and robusta have combined to create, you know, over the years hybridizations to create uh, um, the Arabica. But it's really taken a lot of um, enthusiasm in the barista world over the last two years because of, you know, just a lot of people. It's just trendy. It's a trendy coffee. People are trying it out, and it's good to see the excitement about it. So we're talking about Eugenio's coffee from Finca Las Nubes in Colombia, 2,000 meters. Um, Julian is the, the grower. What else are they doing? It's a natural process, and then they take the natural process and they put it into an anaero anaerobic fermentation for eight days. The anaerobic fermentation is basically you're reducing the amount of oxygen that the coffee is exposed to the fermentation. And typically that um, that helps to actually, I guess that's accentuating the creaminess aspect of the coffee. Eugenioid's coffees tend to have a lot more flavors, uh, fruity flavors of like banana and stuff like that. And so the anaerobic process is probably to really increase that. He wasn't necessarily too clear on that. He does talk about how the, the 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 altitude of the growth 2000 plus meters is concentrating the sweetness as well as the organic acids and the lipids and um what else he says so in all well, what he's also communicated to us is his extraction he's using he's going for 20 percent extraction with eight percent tds and he's using um, a brew recipe of 20 grams of coffee into the portafilter with 40 grams of coffee coming out of the portafilter, and he's trying to brew that at 91 Celsius. So there, he's providing a lot of information technically about the coffee. He's also mentioned that these brew parameters will be used throughout the presentation in all three flights of drinks, okay? Um, then we're talking about how, how are we going to do this? We're going to, or how are we going to, um, what are we going to taste? So we should have high sweetness with some notes of brown sugar, passion fruit, cacao notes, tangerine, a 
and a little bit of maltiness, like a light maltiness, he, I believe he said. We're also going to have low bitterness and medium acidity that's really juicy. And then medium brown body as well as a silky texture. And so what he's talking about here is we've got a couple categories. I better put my glasses on. <laughs> so we've got the categories of taste experience, accuracy of flavor descriptors, tactile experience, and accuracy of tactile descriptors. So he's trying to provide a roadmap for us as judges to follow along so that as you're a judge and you're tasting these beverages, you know, you're hitting, he's given a sweetness, brown sugar, passion fruit, tangerine, malt, um, cacao nibs. The more of those that you hit, the greater your potential score, right? You want, you want to give, as a competitor, you want to give the judges good flavor notes that are accurate. And the more accurate you can get, like, instead of just saying chocolate, he's saying cacao nibs. You know, so cacao nibs have a relatively distinct feature to them. Like if you've tried them, it's not just chocolate, it's very specific. And so the more specificity you can give in, the, in your flavor notes, and if you can hit them, the greater your potential score. The notes like malt, and then also low bitters, medium acidity, things like that. And that, these are great notes, and yeah, let's get back into it. We're at 520. Again, brown sugar, cacao nibs, passion fruit, papaya, and tangerine with hint of malt. You know, my friend, you're just for this tasting experience, I need you place your scotch it on the space inside of the boxes in front of you. Thank you. So here's something I want to say. We're at 549 stopping for a moment. I wanted to note here, you can see the, the espresso has this layer of crema on top, right? This is one of the first categories we're looking for, which is crema, yes or no. And really the question is, is there the presence of crema? As you can see, there is the presence of crema. We're, not, we're looking to make sure that the crema is there and that there are no holes and no black peeking through the top. And from this perspective, it's a little bit limited from us. As a judge, you'd be able to look, bend over and look directly on top of the, the, the glass. However, from this point, it looks like it's, it's fine, so we would give that point there. Here go, Michael. Thank you. Now, please, tap the play button on the tablet. Follow the instructions. Put on your headphones and enjoy this amazing experience. Now, this is an interesting aspect here where they're going to put on these headphones. And they had some nice ones, Sennheiser, my headphones, as well as a multimedia presentation that is guiding the competitor, the, the judges, in how to taste the beverage. So what it's telling them is to smell the, the dry ice, the CO2 being emitted from the dry ice, then taste, then smell again, then taste again. Now, he was saying that's going to help give the tropical fruit notes greater emphasis. I don't know. That, that's, an interest, that's, that's a very interesting concept, I think. So as you okay, can see here, he's uh, cleaning, and that's now an important part of it. it. So you can score my espresso. I will get started with your milk course. So now we're starting with the milk course. And you know, every, watch how he's doing all this. Always very clean. So, from a technical, you know, judge standpoint, there's no, there's no errant, you know, coffee grounds anywhere. Oh, yes. We roasted this coffee 11 days. Everything ago. is really tight. It just looks great. The station looks great. Was eight minutes with 18% development. So now he's telling us a little bit more about the roast profiles. the major stage for three and a half minutes, and the development stage was extended for 90 seconds to bring out. The beautiful sweetness and the fruit of this coffee. The nice thing is that he's talking about these this data. It's a 3.5% hog that has been frozen and dripping in this container. But he's connecting it to this why he's doing that. This reduces the water that. and increase the sugars, fat, and proteins. The result is a more concentrated milk. 
that complements the sweetness and the tactile of my coffee. This mix is produced here in Italy. I'm steaming to 50 degrees to get even more sweetness from the milk. So he froze this three and a half whole percent whole milk. And what's unclear to me is, is the milk still in a frozen state inside the funnel or is it, I mean, it's, it's obviously melting, but how melted is it? Because the idea of what he's saying is that the okay, freezing of friends, the milk David, you know, concentrates the flavor in the remaining liquid. One, two, three, tastes just amazing. So you will enjoy beautiful flavors of butter cookies. Nougat, caramel, almond, and cocoa. A little bit shaky, With a beautiful but that's experience to be expected. That has a creamy and a fluffy sensation that feels like melted ice cream. That's a nice description, melted ice cream. If he can pull that off, I think that would help really to, you know, get, gather more points. There you go. Please enjoy. Here you go, my friend. Please enjoy. Thank you. So again, butter cookies, nougat, caramel, almond, and cocoa with a beautiful tactile experience, with a fluffy, with a creamy and a fluffy sensation that feels like melted ice cream. I mean, that just sounds great. You know, that creamy, fluffy, melted ice cream. You just want, hoping that you're tasting that. You're hoping that your experience will be that you know, so you can give the maximum amount of points. Now, as judges, you want, judges really want to give you as many points as possible. There you go, my friend, please enjoy. It's, it's just a please matter enjoy. of you delivering you. the means for us to do that. So I did get, I will stop for a moment here for 1046. I did get a moment to look at the the coffee here, the milk beverage, there's a visual score that we give. And unfortunately, the visual score that I saw, it was kind of occluded, the, the, my, my view of it, because we're only watching the same viewpoint. There wasn't much contrast on the one that, I, and that, and the one that's going in front of the female judge. There wasn't much contrast, and that's the only one that I was able to see. So that, that could be a little bit of a detriment in points-wise. Of course, there are three other judges, so the other pours could have been really, really fantastic. The only one that we were able to see in the video was the one from um, the female judge. Okay, judges. Well, let's stop here with 1102 right before we begin and go back just a little bit so we can discuss the, he was freezing the milk. And one of the things that comes in my mind as a judge is how much frozen was it? How frozen was this milk? And the idea behind the milk freezing is that you're trying to concentrate the sweetness and the flavors. Does it really concentrate the milk in that way? It's an interesting thing to talk about. I think it could be, I think it could be quite good, quite good. So I, I wish, I wish I could try it myself. All right, let's get back to it. Coming up, the thin natural drink. The first ingredient is the four shots of espresso I made at the start of my presentation. Let them cooling down to open up the flavors and leave the acidity. The second ingredient gives a balance and a fruit sweetness to the drink. It is a frozen cherry reduction, made by using fresh cherries over low heat for 30 minutes. Then I strain it and frozen on this funnel and adding 12 grams. The third ingredient feels like ripe mango and sweet passion fruit in the drink, but it is a pineapple and a star fruit reduction, made by using one part of pineapple and two parts of a star fruit over low heat for 30 minutes. Then I strain it and frozen on this funnel and adding 24 grams. The fourth ingredient 
provides a sugar cane and a blackberry sweetness and contributes with a texture. It is a frozen cherry reduction. No, sorry, excuse me. It is a frozen eugenoides mucilage reduction made by using, made by heating the mucilage for 10 minutes at 80 degrees. I'm using eight grams. Now, I will homogenize the drink at 700 RPMs to mix all the ingredients. The fifth ingredient gives a cool, refreshing feeling with a flavor of peach. It is a eugenoides cold brew. I have it right here in frozen spheres. I made the eugenoides cold brew with tony water in a ratio of one to eight. 12 hours total brew time. So my friends, tasting nuts, cacao nibs, ripe mango and passion fruit with a cold refreshing feeling with a flavor of peach. You will also enjoy a sugar cane and a blackberry sweetness with a lasting finish. So my friends, you are ready to go. Just sip from the straw and enjoy this amazing drink. And go through a little bit. Well, one thing I wanted to touch base with you guys on is that one of the things I really enjoyed about his performance is that he, he was talking earlier before the milk drink about the roast parameters, that he was using a loring and he was talking about the different changes in the drying phase as well as the Maillard reaction to get certain results out of it. Now, a lot of times, briefs, the competitors will talk about different variables, but they don't really correlate that to reason. Right, so he's talking about he's changing parameters to get better sweetness. That's kind of what you wanna you wanna talk about is tell us why, make a correlation there, a connection. And one of the things that here that that was a little bit that that brought a question in my mind was he takes the the, the four different ingredients: the frozen reduction of the cherries, the pineapple star fruit, and the eugenioid mucilage reductions. And then with the coffee, and he stirs them. Now he mentioned that he puts it in a, you know, he's using a lot of lab equipment, and it's very impressive in that respect. But he's using a lab stirrer, and he says that he's stirring it or homogenizing it at 700 RPMs. And, you know, these are very deliberate choices in words. And then 700 RPM, in my mind, especially after this entire presentation of giving us all this detail and reasons behind the detail, it's just 700 RPMs. It seems like a bit of a superfluous detail. Like, so as a judge, my question is, why 700? You've told us why about everything else, but you didn't tell us a reason why it's 700, because outside of that, who really cares? Who really cares about the speed? Is it mixed? I, actually, in many respects, the mixture doesn't matter. It's how it tastes and performs in the cup that matters, you know, and how well you describe it. But that's just a minor detail that, that may pass through the judge's mind. Another thing that I'm wondering is like the mucilage reduction. You know, mucilage, if you're familiar, is a really thin membrane of fruity pulpy matter that's surrounding the coffee bean after it's, uh, after it's been removed from the hull. And so when he says that they created this mucilage reduction, I'm curious to know how that mucilage liquid came to be. Did he just take the harvested and pulped cherries, uh, seeds, and then put them into the into some kind of vessel and did something there, or was there a way? I mean, I'm, I'm knowing what mucilage is, I'm curious to know how that was processed. Or as they were running a mu the mucilage daughter, which is a machine that removes the mucilage from the beans mechanically, are you just taking the, the pulpy matter from that? I mean, so it's, it's a curiosity that I'm interested to know. But now he's, um, he's made it this, he's also tells us that he's made a sphere, a frozen sphere, of the Eugenioids coffee as a cold brew that he 
cold brew for 12 hours, and he mixed with uh, tonic water in a ratio of uh, 1 to 8. He froze it into spheres, and that's the base, so frozen spheres, and then the combination of the reductions and the espresso together poured over it with a straw. Sounds, sounds rather fascinating. Sounds rather interesting. Let's continue. 1352. Our five senses allow us to experience the world around us, and it can influence how we enjoy what we eat and drink. So let's make intentional efforts to stimulate the senses of a coffee consumers so we can elevate their tasting experience and make the specialty coffee even more special. Thank you very much. Time. And time for Diego from Colombia. All right, that was Diego Campos from Colombia. Fantastic setup there. And um, as all of you know already, he's now the world champion. So this was his second performance during the world championship. This is the semifinals round performance. I have not seen yet the finals round performance. And the first round is also out there, so you can, I'll provide links to the videos below so you can have a look at them yourself and follow along and take a look for yourself as well as links to the sensory score sheet that you can download and review yours as well. So let's go through it. I mean, there's the difficult part about this kind of thing is that we're looking at it from a sensory perspective, right? How he did and what he did. And it's very difficult as an observer, we're not tasting anything, whether we're observing from the stands inside the, the arena or we're watching from home on, on the internet. We have no idea what they taste like. A lot of great ideas, a lot of great presentations. One of the interesting things as I was watching the live feed, uh, one of the, a couple of the other viewers were talking about how they were scoring the, the competitors and, and I just kind of laughed because there's, there's no way to know. Like, yes, of course, you're, you're, you're fans of your, of your preferred competitors, so you want to be very complimentary to them. Like one of them was like, was sure that his guy was going to win and unfortunately he did not. But he was talking about how he scored that guy's drinks higher than and everyone else. And there's just no way to do that because we're not tasting it. You know, the different categories of taste experience, accuracy of flavor descriptors, tactile experience, and then accuracy of tactile descriptions. I mean, these are things that we can surmise that based on his enthusiasm and the way that he described everything that hopefully you got those. And like if he was able to really deliver on those the way that he described everything, so the espresso, high sweetness with brown sugar, passion fruit, tangerine, cacao nibs, a light maltiness, low bitterness, medium acidity that's a bit juicy with a long-lasting finish and silky texture. I mean, a medium round body, wow, that's a lot of detail and a lot of, you know, accuracy. And if he's able to deliver on those, I mean, really, there's no reason why you wouldn't give fives for a lot of those or, or even more, depending on the quality of those, right? And so, yeah, and then let's look at the, uh, the flavor descriptions for the milk beverage, butter cookie, nougat, caramel, almond, cocoa. Then is tactile sensations, talking about the creamy fluffiness of melted ice cream. Man, I mean, it's just, it's kind of like a coffee drink seduction going on here with Diego. and. If he's, again, if he's able to deliver on that, man, you just would like to give more points, fives, fives and halves, maybe sixes, you know. What we can look at and give scoring on, you know, that that's, should be relatively accurate would be things like the presence of crema in the espresso. I would say yes, there was definitely crema. And then functional and correct espresso vessels used. Yes, I mean, of course, these are only yes or no questions, which means that there's only one point each. So it's not really indicative of anything. I would say visually of the of the of what I saw from the female judges drink. I mean, I would have given it probably a two point five. It just didn't have a visually appealing look. It was a lot of brown, not too much white. Now, of course, I'm limited in my vision because we're only able to see what the camera sees, and so. I have to admit that was very limited and, but correct functional vessel used for it, absolutely. So there's another point there. Then moving on into the, uh, into the espresso, be the, the signature beverage, you know, we have to ask, like there's the first category is well explained, introduced and prepared. Like one of the ways we approach that is how well do you understand how he made the drink? And we understand pretty much everything, how he did it. He took this reduction, 
He took cherries, he reduced them, and he froze them. He gave us the ratio of the pineapple and the star fruit, and then 24 grams. 12 grams for the cherry reduction, and then the eugenioids um, mucilage reduction, 8 grams of that. And then he's talking about how he made a sphere of the tonic water and cold brew of the eugenioids coffee. And he's putting place all that together, you know, so you really understand basically how he's done pretty much everything in this signature beverage. All the ingredients, he explained it all, why, you know, I would, and I would say, you know, 5.5. I would give that appealing presentation, yes. Functionality, yes. Creativity and synergy with coffee, that's something, again, that's a flavor experience, that's a taste experience that only... We can only accurately answer that question by experiencing it, right? The synergy, how well do those components go together as a, as a whole? The taste experience and the accuracy of flavor descriptors, again, those have to be tried. If you're the judge in the, in the chair, you'll be able to answer those. Some of these other things here that we're talking about, the next category is barista evaluation. So presentation, professionalism, I would say easily a five, easily excellent. Now, there's some things, he's very friendly, he's enthusiastic, comfortable, a little bit shaky, you know, he's a little bit nervous, fully expected, but I think that's one of the things that's like, you know, the nervousness is to be expected, but it's not, if you were like totally rock solid and not, and not shaky, whoa, that's super impressive, right? Um, everything that he, he correlates everything, like he correlates roasting to the reason, and I thought that was really great. So in that case, for... Um, that's why I would say a five rather than a six. Attention to detail, all accessories available. I mean, it seems like he had everything, so that I gave a six to. Appropriate apparel. What we're looking for appropriate apparel is the barista wearing an apron. That's really the basic criteria. So yes, the barista's wearing an apron. And then now the judge's total impression. And, you know, what did he say? He talked about stimulating the senses of smell, touch, hearing, sight, and taste. I imagine that he's touching on all those things. And, you know, really good use of the media. And then one of the nice things that I really liked about his presentation is that he, he would give the flavor notes, the, the taste descriptors, give you a moment to digest those as you're going. And he's, he's going a little bit fast. Like, that's one thing, I, you know, I would like him to have better pacing to give you a little more time for note-taking. Uh, one of the one of the competitors that I thought was really really good at that was Emmy Fukuhori. She really was very deliberate in her delivery of this is my data. I'm going to do this while you're writing and then come back. You know, but what I really liked about Diego's presentation was that he told you the flavor descriptors and then he came back to them again to tell you again. So in case you missed one of them, like at one point, especially early on, he was talking about the brown sugar in the espresso. I kind of missed that and had to, and I was glad that he came back to it so that I could, you know, catch up on that. So I was able to make sure that I got all of the flavor descriptors that we're supposed to be looking for. Now, in a situation like this, or when we're watching on the internet, we can easily hit the back button and, and review everything. But when you're actually in the chair, you don't have that luxury. You have to be really on it. And like, as a judge, you know, you get a lot of barista competitors that are throwing a lot of details at you all the time, you know, and it's like, they want to try to impress you with their details, but in many ways, they're overwhelming you. So Diego's got a good pace of delivering information with a little bit of time to, uh, to write it all down. But the great thing is that Diego comes back to the details, and that's really helpful as a judge. And so I would say that for a professionalism, I would say, or total impression, easy five, easy five. So... You know, these scores that I'm giving here really don't amount to much, even if they were shared amongst four times four, but because we're missing all the important categories where there's multipliers on the scoring. And so without the actual tasting of the drink, you really can't give true, accurate assessment of what it was like, you know. That's not to say that Diego didn't do a great job. He did, obviously. You know, for him to win at this level, he's obviously hitting off a lot of the notes that he's telling you and man he's i'm sure he's delivering like i i'm really interested to try his drinks because they just sound wonderful all right so that's pretty much it for today that's that's our whole uh score sheet review debrief with uh, diego compass's semi-finals performance maybe we'll get the finals video at some point and we'll go through that as well but i don't know if there's really gonna be much different because 
the guy is super solid and uh, really well rehearsed and really well done. So congratulations against Diego. And I hope this video provides some kind of service and value to you. Hope it gives you some insight into what we do as judges and how the competition really works. And uh, if you like that, you know, let me know. Drop comments down below. And uh, yeah, otherwise, thanks for tuning in. See you next time.